Okay, today we will be focusing on exploring quadratic graphs. Um, so before we start, we really need to look at a little bit of vocab. Does it mean if something's quadratic? All that good stuff. So quadratic function, that's any function that you can write in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The only catch is a cannot equal 0. Okay, so we're having something that has x squared in it. If a equals 0, then that x squared is gone. So we'd only have something that's linear. So a quadratic function, it can always be written in that form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and a does not equal 0. Um, f of x equals x squared is the quadratic parent function. That means it's the simplest of all the quadratic graphs. And it looks something like if we have our x and y axis, it's going to be, sorry, it's, well, it doesn't exactly look right because it's supposed to go through the origin, but I'm having a little trouble with my pen right now. Um, but it's going to be going upward like that. But it would really start at the origin. The name of that kind of graph of a quadratic graph, we call it a parabola. So a parabola is the graph of a quadratic function, and it is a U-shaped curve. Um, we are going to learn a little wonderful song about parabolas, and I want you to write it down, and we'll talk about it, and I'm going to show you this little video clip. It's probably my favorite song of the math songs. Um, and here's how it goes. All right. So the parabola song, it is sung to the tune of the Muppet song, Menomena. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a small clip from Menomena, and then we'll work with that tune to make our parabola song. Menomena. 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 Okay, so you could watch more of that for your viewing pleasure at some time, Menomena. But just for now, just the clip so we know the tune. Whenever I heard the word parabola first, I just thought, man, it sounds so much like Menomena, so I'm going to be thinking with that. So whenever you hear the words um, parabola, that sounds like that Menomena part. So like have animal has it, so it's like parabola, parabola, it is symmetric. And then so da 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 Okay, parabola, a U-shaped curve, parabola, it is quadratic, symmetric, parabola, a U-shaped curve, dun, 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 dun. So we're doing that same tune, it's a really short, simple song, it tells us a lot that we need to know about parabolas, and I think it's pretty easy to remember, so I can do it all the way through, but parabola, it is symmetric, parabola, a U-shaped curve, Parabola, it is quadratic, symmetric, parabola, U-shaped curve. And then continue on. You can sing that multiple times. We'll have to do it in class for sure. Um, so here's some more vocab to deal with our parabolas or our quadratic functions. Um, the axis of symmetry, that's going to be something we'll be focusing on a lot. Axis of symmetry is the line that divides a parabola into two parts that are mirror images. So usually we have like a parabola, and the axis of symmetry would be the line that you could fold the parabola along and it would match itself exactly. The vertex of the parabola, it's the point at which the parabola intersects the axis of symmetry. So if I have my parabola, which is down here because the orienting is off, but right there where the parabola and the axis of symmetry intersect, that's the vertex of your parabola. And what's really helpful to know about the vertex it's often the maximum or the minimum of the parabola. So if I was having an upside down parabola, okay, the vertex would be at the top, the maximum of it. But if I have a normal U-shaped parabola, the vertex would be the minimum of that. Okay, so we're going to look at... A okay, so what we're going to look here, identify the vertex of each graph, and we're also going to try to find the axis of symmetry too because that's obviously, it's just good practice. Um, and then we want to know if the vertex is going to be a maximum or a minimum. So right here, if we look at example A, I want you to actually try to do it on your own, but if you're looking at the vertex, it seems to me like it's right there. Okay, So the vertex is the point 1, 2, Okay, the ordered pair 1, 2. If I look for the axis of symmetry, this little yellow line I'm dotting, 
right there, that's my axis of symmetry where I could fold my parabola. The axis of symmetry, I won't be able to just have ordered pairs for it, but it will be a line, a vertical line. And I hope you remember that vertical lines have the form x equals, so this axis of symmetry is at x equals 1. Okay, try to do b on your own and see if you've got, get it right. Okay, so here, pause it and then check. All right, vertex is right here. It looks at, at the point 2, negative 4. And then my axis of symmetry, so again, it looks like it's da, 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 da. So the axis of symmetry, that's going to be at the equation x equals 2 on that line. Um, and the only other thing I forgot to do is tell you whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. So in this first one, the vertex is the highest point on its, the graph, so it's a maximum. On the second one, this vertex is the lowest point on the graph, so it's a minimum. Okay, it's the minimum, it's the lowest value on that graph. Okay, another thing you'll have to do today is actually get an equation and graph it from a, straight from a table. So if we're making a table of values to graph the function f, uh, y equals one third x squared, I highly recommend picking positive and negative values, otherwise you aren't going to get a good picture of this. Um, so I like to pick zero in the middle, and because this has one third, I usually do multiples of three so I can avoid the fractions, but that's like a personal preference. So I would usually pick negative three, negative six, three, and six. So simply I'm plugging and having these points for x, and I'm going to solve my equation for y. So if x is negative six, it's important to know you're going to do negative six squared, which is positive 36, times a third, you're going to get 12. If I do negative three, then I have negative three squared is 9 times the third is 3. 0 squared is obviously 0 times the third is 0. 3 squared is going to behave the same way that negative 3 did. I'm going to get 3. And then 6 squared, 36 times the third, 12 again. So I'm going to plot these points. So I've got the point negative 6, 12, and I might have to do some serious counting here, but 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I want this graph to count by 1, so I'm just going to go off it a little. That's going to be my point 6, 12 right up there. Okay. And then negative 3, 3, 0, 0, 3, 3, and then 6, 12 again. Okay. So once you have your line, you are going to connect them with a smooth curve. It's going to look like a U, not a V. Okay. So this is my graph of y equals 1 third x squared. Okay, and if you're getting a quadratic graph like this and it doesn't look like a parabola, check your math and also you might want to check if you're putting in good values for your x and making sure to get positive and negatives in a good spectrum there. Because it should look symmetric and it should look like a U-shaped curve, a parabola. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, we're going to look here at these graphs. And I've already graphed them out for you. So f of x equals negative x squared, f of x equals negative 3x squared, and f of x equals 1 half x squared. And I want you to look at which one's the narrowest and which one's the widest. Because when we're talking about parabolas, we don't usually use the word slope, but we talk about the width of the graph, if it's really wide or really narrow. So I hope that you can just see by looking up here or that f of x equals negative 3x squared, this one looks like it's the narrowest. It's really skinny. And this last one, it looks like it's the widest. And the first one looks like it's in the middle. Okay. So if I was going to ask you to order it from least or from widest to narrowest, like I did, you would say f of x equals 1 half x squared is the widest followed by f of x equals negative x squared, followed by f of x equals negative 3x squared. Okay, and this is something I think is worthwhile noting. This number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared, that's something that affects how wide it is. And you could probably notice, like, if it's 1 half right there, it would not be going up as steeply which therefore is why it's making it widen out. And like negative 3, that would be multiplying by negative 3 would make it go a lot steeper. So we look at that absolute value of 
a, we call that a because in our a quadratic equation, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is the coefficient of x squared, the a value. The absolute value of a, it impacts the width of the graph. So if it's a large absolute value, like a really big absolute value, like 20, okay, that would have a very narrow width. If it was a very small absolute value, one hundredth, that would have a very wide graph. Um, if I ask you to graph these two, and I want you to look at another relationship here. So graph these functions, y equals 3x squared and y equals 3x squared minus 2. Actually, I'll give this a different color. Um, I want you to think about how those graphs are the same and how they're different. So I'm going to pick some values for x and y, and this time I'm just going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, um, and I'll just plug that in. So I'm going to have negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3, 0, again 3, 12. Boy, this looks familiar to the last one I just picked, just because of my scales. Um, now this time I'm going to do 3x squared minus 2. So you can probably notice here that this is 3x squared already, so I can just subtract 2 from that. So it's going to be 10, 1, negative 2, 1, 10. Okay, and then I want to graph them on the same graph. So if I put negative 2, 12, um, again, I'm going to be up a little bit. I better make that purple. Negative 1, 3. 0, 0, 1, 3, and 2, 12. Okay, and I make my lovely U-shaped curve. Okay, and then I'm going to do the green one. Um, so negative 2, 10. Go right there. Negative 1, 1. 0, negative 2, 1, 1, and 2, 10. So you're going to see that they look a whole lot alike. Okay, if you check them out, and I ask you to compare them, so we're going to say what they're the same about. So they have the same width. Okay, they're both relatively narrow. They both, we can say, open upwards. These would be good comparisons of them. I might say um, they both have an axis of symmetry at x equals 0, or I might call that just the y-axis. Uh, if I asked you to contrast two and we're dealing with the differences, it would be really useful to say that um, the vertex of y equals 3x squared minus 2 is two units lower. So it's at 0, negative 2. It shifted down to. Other than that, these pretty much look exactly alike, except for um, it shifted down. Okay, let's look at one last one. So good word problem. A monkey drops an orange from a branch 26 feet above the ground. Force of gravity causes the orange to fall towards Earth. The function h equals negative 16t squared plus 26 gives the height of the orange h in feet after t seconds. Graph this quadratic function. Okay, so this time, if I'm graphing this, I first need to think about what makes sense. So for t, my time, it's going to have to be 0 or positive, right? It's not going to be a negative one. And for my height, it looks like it's starting at 26 and then going down. 26 or below, but I'm probably not going to go into the negatives either. So I am probably going to make this 30. I'm counting by 30s by threes up on there. So negative 16, I will give some good values for t and h. So I'm going to go at 0. Um, we'll be at 26. At 1, it would be negative 16 times 1 is negative 16 plus 26, that's 10. If I tried to go to 2, then I'd have negative 16 times 4, um, which is negative 64 plus 26. I would have 2 negative 38. So that doesn't seem reasonable because my height's not going to be negative. So I would at least plot 0, 26. 110, it's way lower here. And I might try to like just extend that general smooth curve because it looks like it's going to hit there, right about there. Um, and I, that's probably not the best scale. Maybe I should have spread it out. But um, you might try 1.5 or something, but I'm out of time. So I'll see you later.
Now think about these two questions, pause that video. I want you to think about how A affects the graph and how C does.